Imagine a home where your heat pump anticipates your heating needs and adjusts automatically to save you money while keeping you comfortable. Today, I'm diving into the exciting world of home automation and showing you how integrating a not so smart heat pump with Home Assistant can turn your house into a futuristic oasis of comfort and efficiency. This is a 16 kilowatt LG Thermo V heat pump. It was tethered to a simple dumb thermostat that knew nothing beyond on and off. It would treat the heat pump like any old gas boiler. But here's the catch. Heat pumps aren't gas boilers and they demand smarter treatment for optimal performance. That's why I decided to embark on a mission to bring a bit more intelligence to my disappointingly dumb heat pump to increase efficiency and drive down electricity bills. Just like a boiler, a heat pump allows for the control of the water flow temperature. But as this was originally installed, the only way to change the flow temperature was manually on the heat pump control screen. The only control I had over the pump was to switch it on and off via a Z-Wave thermostat. One piece of advice I'd heard several times was leave the heat pump on 24 seven and adjust the flow temperature as required. I expect this might work in a modern, well insulated house, but that is most certainly not this house. Built in 1910, the house is mostly solid brick walls with the exception of this 1970s side extension, which had unfilled cavity walls. It also had single glazing throughout. So the key to heat pump efficiency is to have a super efficient house that can be heated with the lowest possible flow temperatures. I'm tackling that challenge from two angles. Obviously the first is to reduce the heat loss from the property. That is an ongoing long-term project and we've already replaced some of the windows with triple glazing and installed extra insulation. Going forward, I'm planning to wrap the building in extensions and insulate the remaining external walls. For the second part, I want to be able to manage the on-off state of the heat pump and the flow temperature to ensure the house stays at a comfortable temperature. For this, I need to be able to manage the flow temperature programmatically from Home Assistant. For my heat pump, there are two options to do this. Adding LG's Wi-Fi module to make the heat pump available on LG's ThinQ app and API. And the second is connecting to the pump via Modbus. I already had an LG TV set up in the ThinQ app and connected to Home Assistant via the ThinQ integration. So I thought it would be sensible and simpler to bite the bullet and pay the ridiculously expensive cost of the Wi-Fi module. I think I paid something like £140 for it. On top of the module being stupidly expensive, Integrating with the Wi-Fi module via ThinQ has one huge disadvantage. It's all cloud-based. If your internet connection or the LG servers go down, you lose the additional control over the heat pump. We're practical. I want every important part of my home assistant setup to run locally. For this reason, I'm going to add in local Modbus control. I've already bought a Waveshare RS485 to RJ45 Ethernet converter module and I'll make a video soon showing how I install and set that up. The Wi-Fi module does have the advantage of being simple. With this monoblock heat pump, the Wi-Fi module has to be connected to the board inside the heat pump. With the heat pump being a big metal box, the recommendation is to run a cable out of the back into your house and connect the Wi-Fi module inside your house so it has a good connection to your Wi-Fi. But in my case, I have a Unify access point externally just around the corner from the heat pump. So I have opted to install the Wi-Fi module inside the heat pump. So far, I've had no problems with the connection dropping. Once installed, it's just a case of using the indoor control panel to put the module into pairing mode and adding it via the ThinQ app. Once set up in the ThinQ app, you can add the heat pump to Home Assistant using the smart ThinQ LGE sensor integration. Turned out I needed a different integration to the one I used for my TV. So again, I should just have gone straight to using Modbus. Once done, you'll end up with a new climate device and some sensors for the heat pump. That's a good start. I can now control the flow temperature from my phone instead of going to the control panel. But more importantly, I can control it programmatically using automations inside Home Assistant. This part of the project is a work in progress, but I'll show you what I've done so far. I'm far from an expert in Home Assistant, so if you spot me doing anything suboptimal and know of a better way, please let me know in the comments down below. To start with, I've used a schedule helper to create a schedule that defines when the heating should be on and off. This doesn't directly turn the heat pump on and off. It sets a flag to let other automations know that I would like the heating to be on at certain times. You can see here that the heating schedule is on, but the heat pump is off. Every room in my house 
contains combined motion and temperature sensors. Most of these are AOTEC multi-sensor 6s. To simplify my initial tests, I've used a min-max helper to create a sensor that generates an average temperature of the bedroom sensors. This is not optimal, but does give me a reasonable single temperature to reference when deciding if the bedrooms are warm enough. While we're looking at helpers, I've also created three number helpers. One stores the desired heating max water temperature. One is used by the automations to store the last bedroom temperature each time the automations run. And the last one stores the desired room temperature. My first automation is simple. Its only job is to switch the heat pump off. When the heating schedule changes from on to off, we switch off the heat pump itself. The second automation is responsible for turning on the heat pump and it checks if the flow temperature drops below 21 degrees and it switches the heat pump off. The trigger for this is time-based. Currently I run it every five minutes with a condition that checks if the heating is scheduled to be on. The second test checks if the average bedroom temperature is below the desired temperature. If it is, we switch on the heat pump for, and wait 45 seconds for it to start and then set the desired flow temperature. We then pause running this automation for 30 minutes. That 45 second delay is there because when we switch the heat pump on, what we're actually switching on is a two-way valve. And once that valve opens, that then starts the pump and also turns on a relay which switches on the heat pump. So there's approximately a 30 second delay between turning the heat pump on and it actually turning on. And we can't change the flow temperature until the heat pump has switched itself on. The initial flow temperature is set with a template that returns a temperature that will be at least the heating target temperature plus one degrees and at most the maximum flow temperature. As the bedroom temperature and the target heating temperature get really close together, the flow temperature will be reduced. The second part of this automation checks if the flow temperature is below the room target temperature or below 21 degrees. And if either is true, it switches off the heat pump and pauses the automation for a further 30 minutes. The third automation's job is to manage the flow temperature, to keep it as low as possible while maintaining the desired target temperature. This triggers every 15 minutes when the heat pump is on. The if condition tests if the average bedroom temperature is above the target temperature. If it is, we reduce the flow temperature by two degrees. If the flow temperature is eventually reduced below the target temperature, the previous automation will switch off the heat pump for 30 minutes. The else then tests if the average bedroom temperature is below the average bedroom temperature that we saw the last time the automation ran, and the flow temperature is below the maximum flow temperature. If those are both true, I use a template to increase the heat pump flow temperature. The template increases the flow temperature to the maximum if the average and the target temperature are more than two degrees apart. Otherwise, it increases the flow temperature by two degrees. These three automations combined do a reasonable job of switching the heat pump on when required, keeping the flow temperature at the minimum that will heat the house to the desired temperature and switching it off when not needed. I have plans going forward for more changes. I'd like to add individual room schedules and temperature controls and possibly look at integrating some learning AI type functionality. Although I'm not convinced that's going to be a worthwhile exercise. An important aspect I'm missing is a heat meter. This would allow me to accurately calculate the COP of the heat pump, allowing me to more easily measure if the changes I'm making are actually improving efficiency. I can anecdotally say they are, but measuring the COP would be a foolproof way of checking. If any of that sounds interesting and you like this video, please take a second to mash that subscribe button. And if you want to see how I power this heat pump using only cheap off-peak electricity, check out this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.